Hi friends, good afternoon to everyone. Myself, I am Reshma of BSc in the second year from Upal Pali Degree College. Before moving into our topic, I would like to interact with you for a few minutes. We are living in the world of microbes, right? Microorganisms are present everywhere around us. They are present in water, in the air we breathe, in the food we eat, in the soil, in the room, on the objects, on the skin also. So, they are ubiquitous in nature, present everywhere. And we are constantly exposed to number of microorganisms in our day to day life, right? In that, some of them are beneficial to us and few of them are pathogens that cause uh, diseases to humans. But uh, still, most of the time, we are leading healthy life and we are taking some measures like using disinfectant or chemical which we are using in our day to day life to reduce their number or inhibit the growth of the microorganisms. I think it is a well known that a wonderful discovery of penicillin by Alexander Fleming in the year 1928 is a milestone in the history of medicine. Later, several antimicrobials like streptomycin, vancomycin, sulfur drugs were uh, discovered for the elimination of infectious diseases like uh, pneumonia, tuberculosis, skin infection, wound infection, etc. But unfortunately, the development of bacterial resistance to these antimicrobials have an impact on our hopes. So, there is a need to test a pathogen again is the different concentrations of a given antimicrobials to determine the susceptibility or resistance of a bacteria towards the disinfectant. So, today I am here to explain you do a different dilutions of disinfectants affect the development of bacterial resistance. Now, uh, let me explain you the basic definitions of sterilization and disinfection. Here, have a look into the slide friends. The sterilization, sterilization is a process of killing or removing the bacteria and all other forms of living microorganisms including bacterial spores is known as sterilization. And this sterilization is used for the complete elimination of microorganisms. And you know uh, the sterilization instruments are most commonly used in microbiology la laboratories, surgeries and diagnostic processes. And coming to the disinfection, it is a process of a destruction or removal of microorganisms and reduces them to the level not harmful to health. But here, observe carefully, the disinfection uh, differs from sterilization in that it may not eliminate all the microorganisms present on the object, but it reduces them to the safe levels. So, the disinfection and the sterilization procedures are must for the control of hospital acquired infections or nasocomial infections. So, for that some of the disinfectants should be used in our day to day life to reduce the growth of the harmful bacteria. So, here it is considered that these disinfectants or antimicrobial agents which is especially designed to inactivate the microorganisms or destroy a microorganisms on inanimate surfaces. So, here there is a need to know or learn the proper use of a disinfectant can help to prevent the spread of harmful bacteria and virus, right? But here a, a single disinfectant could not be used for all the purpose, right? Because they usually differ in their mode of action and effectiveness. So, a large amount of disinfectants are now available in the market. So, here have a look onto the slide friends. See, here see there are different disinfectants are used in our day to day life and there are number of examples for the disinfectants like halogens or chlorines which is used in the swimming pools, quaternary ammonium compounds used for the control of microorganisms on floors, walls, 
furnitures, nursing homes and other public places or heavy metals like copper, silver, mercury, these are coagulate the proteins and aldehydes like a formaldehyde. It is used in the disinfection of certain instruments like lab equipments, hospital equipments, etc. And alcohols, in hospital most of the people are using alcohols as a disinfectant. And phenols, today a phenol and phenol derivatives are used as a disinfectant in hospitals and laboratories, right? Dyes, detergents, soaps, alkyls, acids, all these are the different types of disinfectants are used in our day to day life. And here see the slide, these disinfectants are applied to the surface of non-living objects to destroy a microorganisms that are living in the objects. So these type, these disinfectants are frequently used in kitchens, bathrooms, hospitals, surgeries, uh, dental uh, surgeries and all over the surface and other public places. So here, do you know how the disinfectant affect the bacteria? So here, let me clarify you, no need to worry. Here, these disinfectant may cause a physical damage to the plasma membrane and the cell wall. As a result, the cell content will leak into the environment. Then automatically the bacteria will die and it cause a damage to the proteins. In a bacterial cell, all the metabolic activities are depends upon the proteins. When the protein damages, the cell stops its metabolic activities. So, as a result, the bacterial cell will die. So, some of the disinfectant may cause damage to the nucleic acid and alteration of membrane permeability and interfere with other metabolic activities. So, uh, these are the some dis effects of a disinfectant towards the bacteria, right? But uh, do you think what are the factors affecting the disinfection? Now uh, let us learn what are the factors affecting the disinfection. Here see the slide, here there are number of factors affecting the efficacy of a disinfection. So these factors includes, these factors includes time of contact, temperature, pH, chemical structure of a disinfectant, types and number of microorganisms present at that particular surface. So here these factors, not only these factors, some degrees of intrinsic resistance is found in bacterial spores, gram negative bacteria and mycobacterial cells. For our convenience, we take an example of presence of cortex in spores. In spores, the cortex could not allow any kind of disinfectant into the bacterial cell and mycobacterial cell wall, the cell wall forms a barrier which is used to preventing the entry of a disinfectant into the bacterial cell. So here uh, these are the different factors affecting the efficacy of a disinfection. I think friends uh, you may learn about what is disinfection types of disinfectants and factors affecting the disinfection. And now uh, let us move into the next slide. Here see the slide. Here this slide represents the disinfectant which we are using in our day to day life or tested for their efficacy. There are uh, different methods are used for testing the efficacy of a disinfectant. Here see the slide. These are the methods are used. One is a minimum inhibitory concentration, the other one is Kirby bar method and the third one is a phenol coefficient test. Now let us move into the first method which is used to determine the susceptibility or resistance of a bacteria towards the disinfectant. Here see the slide tube dilution assess. Here the tube dilution is also known as a broad dilution. The broth dilution and agar dilutions are most commonly used techniques to determine minimum inhibitory concentration. Here observe the, si observe the slide carefully. According to this method, different dilutions of disinfectant to be tested are taken in a test tubes. 
So, after that inoculate the test organism which you want to test into these test tubes. Then after the inoculation allow these uh, test tubes for a bacterial growth. So, keep these test tubes in an incubator at 37 degree centigrade for 16 to 18 hours. Uh, the next day take out these test tubes from incubator and absorb the test tubes for bacterial growth. Here, but uh, how we identify the bacterial growth? So, for that as we are doing this method in a liquid media, the growth of the microorganisms in a liquid media is indicated by turbidity. So, here see the slide, it is very clear that the first five test tubes are turbid, which means the bacteria has grown at their particular concentrations. While the remaining test tubes are very clear that shows no microbial growth, means the bacteria could not survive at that particular concentrations. So, after the observation, now calculate minimum inhibitory concentration. But how we determine a minimum inhibitory concentration? Here, observe the name itself indicates minimum concentration of a disinfectant that inhibits the growth of the bacteria. So, here the determination of a minimum inhibitory concentration is noted down by the lowest concentration of a disinfectant that exhibits at, at that uh, there is no visible growth. So, according to this method here observe this method, according to this method 63.3 percentage is the 63.3 percentage is the lowest dilution of a disinfectant that exhibits a minimum inhibitory concentration, right. So, this concentration at this concentration the bacteria could not survive. So, at this concentration is enough to reduce the growth of the bacteria. So, then why should we go for high, higher concentration? This particular concentration is enough to us, then there is no need to go for higher concentration. So, uh, this procedure is used to determine the minimum inhibitory concentration. I think is it clear my friends, are you understand? And now, let us move into the second method, Kirby Barr method, right. Here, I think it is well known that according this a uh, Kirby Barr method is a type of disk diffusion method. So, uh, this method is named after the scientist uh, discovered by Kirby and Barr. So, first according to this method, first take a carton swab. Here, the, uh, dip the carton swab into the inoculum, then inoculate Muller Hinton agar plate by streaking the swab in three direction as shown in the slide. Here uh, see the slide, it is very clear that we streaking the swab in a three directions, right. Now after the streaking, now uh, place the different disc which is impregnated with a different concentrations of a disinfectant, right. Here uh, see the slide, we are placing the different types of disinfectants uh, which is impregnated with different concentrations of disinfectants. So, with the help of forceps or a disc dropper. After the inoculation, after the, after this uh, putting disc, disc into the agar plate or petri plate, now allow these uh, test tubes for bacterial growth. So, after the, so keep these uh, petri plates in your incubator at 37 degree centigrade for 16 to 18 hours. After the incubation, absorb the petri plates for bacterial growth. Here see the slide, it is very clear that there is a bacterial growth all over the surface of, uh, all over the surface of petri plate, except the different dilutions of a disinfectant, a disc, disc. Then now uh, here it is very clear that there is no bacterial growth there is no bacterial growth is observed at that particular zone. So, around the disc there is no visible growth of a bacteria. So, 
at which uh, there is no visible growth is known as a zone of inhibition. So, we identify that it is a zone of inhibition and now a measure the diameter of a zone. Here we are measuring the diameter of a zone with the using with the use of a scale. Here see the slide we measuring the diameter of a zone by using the scale right and we have some standard diameters to determine if the bacteria is resistant or susceptible or intermediate towards the disinfected. So, by the measurement of a diameter of zone of inhibition, we identify or we can analysis if the bacteria is a resistance or susceptible or intermediate form towards the disinfectant. So, from this method, we identify the zone of inhibition and we measuring the diameter and we can determine if the bacteria is susceptible or resistance or intermediate. So, this procedure is known as a Kirby bar method. Is it clear? Now, uh, let us move into the third method, phenol coefficient method or Rydal Walker test. Here, this is the one of the most efficient method to determine the disinfectant efficacy, right? Here, we are using phenol. The phenol is probably oldest as it was first used by Joseph Lister. So, in Rydal Walker test, the test organism suspension is subjected to various concentrations of a disinfectant and the phenol. According to this method, in this method, first take a 5 ml of yeast disinfectant dilution and the phenol dilution. For disinfectant dilution, keep a label the test tubes with the concentrations of 1 is to 50, 1 is to 100, 1 is to 150 and 1 is to 200. For the phenol coefficient, phenol dilution, keep uh, label the test tube with the concentrations of 1 is to 50, 1 is to 60, 1 is to 70 and 1 is to 80. Now, after that, after the uh, observation, now inoculate a 0.1 ml of actively growing bacterial culture into various uh, disinfectant dilution and phenol dilution. And after that, wait for some time or at the time intervals of 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, the test organism is transformed into 5 ml of nutrient broth. And from a various concentration or, or various concentration of disinfectant and phenol. Now, place these nutrient broth test tubes in an incubator at 37 degree centigrade for 28 to 48 hours. After the incubation, take out uh, after the incubation, absorb these test tubes for a bacterial growth. Here, see the slide. It is very clear that the bacteria shows a different response or different actions towards the disinfectant at the time intervals of 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, right? Here, at the for disinfectant, at the concentrations of 1.50, 1 is to 50, the bacteria shows a no growth at the time intervals of 5 minutes, 10 minutes or 15 minutes. At the concentration of 1 is to 150, 1 is to 100, the bacteria shows a growth in 5 minutes, no growth in 10 minutes and no growth in 15 minutes. At the concentration of 1 is to 50, the bacteria shows a growth in 5 minutes, growth in 10 minutes, no growth in 15 minutes. At the concentration of 1 is to 200, the bacteria shows a growth in the time intervals of 5 minutes, 10 minutes and 15 minutes. As well as for the phenol dilution, at the concentration of 1 is to 50, the bacteria shows a growth in the time intervals of 5 minutes, 10 minutes and 15 minutes. At the concentration of 1 is to 60, the bacteria shows growth in 5 minutes, no growth in 10 minutes and no growth in 15 minutes. At the concentration of 1 is to 70, the bacteria shows growth in 
5 minutes, growth in 10 minutes, no growth in 15 minutes. At the concentration of 1, 1 is to 80, the bacteria shows growth in, in the time intervals of 5 minutes, 10 minutes and 15 minutes. So, here from this table, we uh, indicate, we observe that the plus indicates the bacterial growth and the zero indicates a no microbial growth of a bacteria. So, after this observation, calculate the phenol coefficient test. Co phenol coefficient test, but how we uh, calculate the phenol coefficient test and what is the use of phenol coefficient test? Here the phenol coefficient test is used as a number indicating the effectiveness of a disinfectant as a germicide relative to the phenol. So we calculate the phenol coefficient test by using the formula of highest dilution of a disinfectant affect the, kill the bacteria in 10 minutes but not 5 minutes. By highest dilution of phenol that kills the bacteria in 10 minutes but not 5 minutes. So here observe the table. According to this table, uh, here in, for disinfectant in 10 minutes the bacteria shows no growth at the concentration of 1 is 200. So it is considered that it is the highest dilution of a disinfectant, right? And for the phenol dilution in time intervals of 10 minutes, the bacteria shows a no growth at the concentration of 1 is to 60. So, it is considered that highest dilution of a phenol. So, now highest dilution of a phenol that kills bacteria in 10 minutes but not 5 minutes by highest dilution of a disinfectant that kills bacteria in 10 minutes but not 5 minutes. Is, is equal to 100 by 60. Then we get the value of 1.66. So, from this uh, we identified that that using disinfectant is more effective than the phenol. How we determine means here after the calculation of phenol coefficient test, if the value get 1.0 means the disinfectant is same level effective than the phenol or if the phenol coefficient is less than 1.0 means the disinfectant is less effective than the phenol or if the phenol coefficient is greater than 1.0 means the disinfectant is more effective than the phenol. So, from this method we identify the bacterial resistance. Now, uh, from is it clear my friends? So, from all this method uh, we identify that depends upon the nature of the bacteria or concentration of a disinfectant, the bacteria develops its resistance, right? But however friends, the overuse of a disinfectant may, it, it may leads into the bacterial resistance. So it is a one kind of factors to develop resistance in a bacteria. Here have a look onto the slide, here uh, see the picture of bacterial cell. Here the bacteria used many mechanisms or strategies used by bacteria in developing resistance towards various disinfectants. Here uh, see the bacteria. The bacteria contains efflux pumps. These efflux pumps are reverse transport systems or located in the membrane. So these efflux pumps or transport the disinfectant out of the cell. And some of the bacteria has a capacity or ability to alter the target site. On other hand, the bacteria contains some special enzymes or other substance to inactivate the disinfectant action while entering into the bacterial cell. So, here there are different mechanisms or strategies are developed by bacteria to various disinfectants, right? So, here from uh, I, would, I would like to conclude my topic that I want friends I wanted to convey you from today's lecture is that depending on the nature of the bacteria the resistance can be gained against different organic disinfectants. But when the bacteria is exposed to sublethal concentrations of disinfectants or 
non effective dilutions of disinfectants there is a chance of bacteria would not only survive but evolve to count the disinfectants right and different classes of disinfectant can be effective at the right dilutions so as a microbiologist it is our responsibility to educate the person using them regarding the effective dilution range of it any disinfectant and one more point the higher dilution may cause resistance in a bacteria and the lower dilutions can leads into the back environmental pollution so as a human being it is our responsibility to know the proper use of a disinfectant as per the instructions provided by are uh, provided on the disinfectant to save our lives or health from dangerous disease causing organisms so here uh, now friends uh, let us uh, recap our uh, recap our topic here first the disinfectant means it is a destruction or removal of microorganisms and all other and reduces them to the safe uh, to the safe levels is known as disinfection and there are number of disinfectants are used in our day to day life and these disinfectants are applied to the surface of non living objects and uh, to destroy microorganisms on on living on the objects and after that the factors affecting the disinfection the factors may depends upon the physical factors temperature ph time of contact concentration of disinfect so these all are the factors affecting the efficacy of a disinfection and there are three methods are used for the testing of efficacy of a disinfection right so these are the three methods are used now after these methods the bacteria develops its resistance depending on depends upon the concentration of a disinfectant so after that so these are the different types of disinfectants will affect the development of bacterial resistance so first i would like to thank uh, our dynamic pravin kumar sir to give this uh, wonderful opportunity to prove ourselves and i heartfully thanks to my college and my college principal and my, and my mentor and all my friends who are encouraging me to be here thank you everyone